Welcome to another episode of All About Code, the show for Xbase++, Clipper and Visual Fox Sport developers. I'm Stefan Prusik and your host of today's show episode, which is about data objects. Data objects are new in Xbase++ 2.0. And the basic idea of data objects is to being able to dynamically add members to objects and this way have a universal transportation container between different layers of your application. Said that, let's look into the source code. Just a reminder, in Xbase++ and the Xbase++ object on a programming model, we want we first need to declare a class and the member variables and methods and all the attributes to make the class and its objects available at runtime. To create an object, we are executing the new method on the class function contact, and in our case, we are getting a contact object back where we can assign, uh, assign values to the different members. Let's look into the debugger when we look into this we see first name it's no last name is doe when we execute the line both are not shown doe um, <clears throat> nothing spectacular but what if i want to add a new member to my class contact for example i want to add a comment hello world execute Build run. The system creates runtime. Our object has no member with this name, comment. This is clear because we have not declared comment on the class, and so objects of that class don't know that member. This is why in Xbase classes are user defined types. They give you the safety of a type system. With data objects, I can do that. without generating a runtime error, like command, hello again, let's compare, F8, let's look at the data object, we have here the data object and the debugger, and as you can see, the member variable comment was added to the data object. There is no class declaration somewhere. It's just an instance of the class data object, which is able to learn members dynamically. And that's the whole secret. So you can add members in your code. For example, you can start using a data object here and the instance travels through your code and you can add new members depending on the levels in your application's architecture to that data. So single container can travel or through different layers of your application and learn data. But it goes even further. <coughs> Very often we don't want to write code where we were writing code by and adding a member variable literally, literally to your data object. We want to have more dynamics. For example, we have a variable name which has a field name from a table, and then we want to have the data object learn that, and we can use that uh, chain though. We can use the macro operator for this. Hmm? When I debug now, uh, need to When we now look at our data object, it has learned the full name from chain Doe. So what has happened here, the macro operator exec was executed, uh, C name was replaced by full name, and full name was tried to be used as the member variable name when accessing the data object. Um, unfortunately, these dynamics have costs, costs means of runtime behavior. In fact, macro operator evaluation, it's a very expensive operation. So if you want to add more than one, many different members to an object, it's more, we added the uh, set no Ivar method 
to data objects or we support a set no IVAR method for data objects but in a different way full name one two chain do two so what I'm doing here is debugger runs I should start let's execute this data object we have full name two chain do so what we have done here is we use the set no IVAR method of the data object, uh, which can be used to, to train new members and initial values uh, to a data object. And after that, it knows them, I can access them. So the question is, why should I use uh, data objects? Because uh, set no IVAR was available in version two, uh, in XSpace plus size versions before 2.0 and Many people have used set no IVAR to catch member variable access and give their classes some type of dynamics. But as you can see here, if you did it with set no IVAR, you have no debugger support. If you did it with set no IVAR, you have no runtime reflection, class describe is not reflecting the learned members. And finally, your set no IVAR implementation can never beat how data objects work because they are very highly optimized. And finally, there is no performance penalty between using data objects and member variable access and regular objects and member variable access. Said that, there's another big argument for data objects. It's related to arrays. Very often <coughs> you are using an XSpace++ arrays, uh, of course, and sub with subarrays to transport data between different layers of your application. While this sounds very neat in the first step, we all know that the problem with arrays is that arrays with subarrays and sub and sub and subarrays are very difficult to handle. There is no speaking name. You are using the index operator and, and the ordinal to access different members. So if I want to access the uh, name of the second file in my directory list, I need to write a data two one, and then I have the name. If I have multiple dimensions, it gets even more complicated. So it would be great if we can use directory function, but with names. And uh, to do that, we can apply another new feature of 2.0, universal SQL, which is able not only to handle tables, remote or local DBF tables, or remote SQL tables uh, with SQL. It's also able to handle in-memory data with SQL, including your arrays. And this is what we are doing here now, as name, and the field two is as size from, and we are now directory into objects, a data, let's see. Let's go to this. Let's look into the a data variable. A data, it's again an array, but this time it's no more array with a subarray. It's an array of objects because we declared objects, and by default, the universal SQL engine uses data objects. And because we gave the array elements names, we now have data objects with names. So instead of writing this, I can access the name by using that. And this is where data objects are, are great, because they make your code better readable, there are no performance penalties, and um, make finally it uh, yeah, better to maintain, they're transparent in the debugger, so I like them and I learned to like them very much. Said that, Hope you enjoyed uh, my episode about data objects and see you next time.